So this is where uh, we left uh, last time. And uh, now let's uh, see a, a solution on how to solve this uh, problem, right? Again, this is an evolution like we discussed last time. And we're going to be taking one step at a time and eventually get to these protocols so that you'll have a better understanding. And also you can detail this uh, knowledge uh, in your long-term memory, right? So any problem in um, technology is always solved by a layer of abstraction, right? So whenever you have a problem, um, the way to do it is uh, abstracting the details into another process so that you can remove some of the complexities. Uh, that's exactly what we're going to be seeing right now and how this uh, problem is solved. So let's like take this as a solution one, for example, All right? So in the previous scenario, we had a couple of applications and uh, web applications and each one had this own database and the web app had to do the authentication and authorization in the web application itself. So let's see how to abstract the details so that um, you can um, see how this is solved. So let's take the same examples, right? And uh, let's take the user, John, and then another user, Sam, and uh, they use their browser. And um, access app one, and then app two. And then it has a database like we saw last time. So in the last case, the application one and application two had the login and password information. So it, it had the logic uh, to store that. So let's see how to abstract that process so that we can alleviate some of the pains that the web application has to do. So in order to solve this problem, you can have another service called identity man, uh, identity service. You can, um, it's called IMS. Uh, for now, let's call like identity services, right? And if you have some kind of a database, which uh, we will, will truly be storing all the user details like um, username, passwords, uh, last name, first name, and uh, email, etc. Exactly what we saw last time. So instead of these details being stored in this databases, now it was stored as part of this database right here. So now if you take the same flow as last time, when the user, in this case, John, logs in, the web application is going to make like an API call, right? API is like application programming interface. You don't have to worry about it this time, but it makes a call to the identity service to say, hey, this John is logging in with username and password. What do you think, right? So the identity service, it's going to look up this database and it's going to say whether it's the user is a valid user or not. Right. So if it's a good user, it's going to res respond with saying, hey, this user is good. So the web application can allow the users to do some kind of an actions. So one important thing I failed to mention last time is uh, one of the fields in the table will be like roles. Right. So what permissions is the user allowed to do? Right. So authentication, which we saw here. Is who you are. Right. And then authorization tells you what you can do in the in the context of the applications, like what permissions do you have, right? So that is something uh, which which we can revisit at a later time. But for now, um, assume that it's stored in, in the identity service uh, itself. So now, if the application two has to authenticate Sam, it does the same thing. It makes an API call. And then it says, hey, Sam has a username and password. Can you check your local database and see if he's a valid user or not? And again, the same process repeats and, this, and the application allows the user to log on to do certain things, right? So 
this kind of solves the problem right to a certain extent we the duplication which we saw here is not duplicated anymore it is kind of centralized but still the credentials are stored sent to the app so app application has the access to the credentials and if it's a rogue application or if it was somehow controlled by a malicious actor they can do pretty bad things uh, in in the context of web applications and still mfa is a huge issue because the application still has to do it because it's uh, still the flow is still going to the web application and um, we kind of solved this problem right um, not, not exactly the user still has to remember um, different passwords so still the problem is so the only thing as far as uh, we're concerned the duplication is solved and uh, web application uh, the load on the web application is kind of reduced by this kind of a solution so i want to stop here this is uh, a short video but uh, i want to take a new concept on um, how you can take the same concepts and understand how the enterprise applications are using the same concept to allow users to do different things. So, so you may be working in a company today, a big company, small company. So once you go to the office and um, when you log in one time, you get access to different sets of application, right? So then you need to understand a protocol that goes and that makes this all happen, right? And we will uh, take a short detour to understand what that is and then um, we can we can continue with our journey on the evolution of saml 2.0 so until next time take care and i'll see you soon